Good morning. We're going to get started on the color work for the Grown Together Mittens. And I'm putting this video together because I noticed that everybody's suffering from a little bit of extra stress right now. And I don't blame you. We're all feeling it. So that just means that we're not as careful readers as we have been in our previous lives. And we're reading things that we want to see rather than things that are actually there. So that's causing a little bit of a challenge. But if we work through this together and pay attention to the details, we're going to end up with some pretty cool mittens. So the first thing we need to think about is the designer talked about change the needle if you need to. Are you a knitter that needs to get to a larger needle in order to maintain gauge during color work? I don't, so I'm going to keep knitting the whole thing with the same needles. If you do, though, because you know that about yourself as a color work needle, knitter, go for it. Mm -hmm. This is a personal preference and you're learning about how you work best. So if you need it, go for it. All right. We're going to join color two and we're going to follow the chart. And we're going to keep in mind that if we need to, we can add more stitches at the end for the room in the hand. But here's one way to find out. Try it on. And now if you shove your fingers together inside the mitten here, you're going to think, oh my goodness, right? With them all pinched together, I have overdone this tremendously, right? I'm only going to need another finger's width. But then you're going to have to look, wear mittens like this and you're never going to be able to do that. So think about how much room would be comfortable inside the mittens and I think you'll find it's okay. You could always knit less rows on this end if you think it's really going to be a problem. But right now we're just checking for length. And remember, we want a little bit of room because air trapped inside this warm, fluffy wool is going to be insulated and warm and keep your fingers nice and warm. All right. So you're going to work the color work in the stockinette section, right? You're going to get rid of this garter stitch. And she says, cease garter stitch, right? So work just as you are because now you don't have to think about two things, only switching colors, not switching stitches. And then we need to start the color work at column four. Right. I think what else I'm noticing is that we all have a little bit of trust issues, which is why I'm getting so many emails that say, why? Why would we start the chart here? Well, think about it. There's five steak stitches. So if you start at stitch one, you're going to knit your steak pattern all the way over into here. So steaks are traditionally one stitch in one color, one stitch in another. One, it's a visual marker, so you know where you are. And two, it gives you a straight line to cut along. Yes, I just said cut. So I think you just need to buckle down and have a little bit of faith, even if you're not quite ready to trust, right? That this is going to work. So here's the chart. Again, you'll notice I'm not showing the whole thing because we are want to be super respectful of any designer's pattern and not just spread it around, okay? But notice that there are three charts here. The first section denoted in red, the second one denoted in blue, and the third one in green. She also writes this out for us in numbers, telling us which stitch number, one through five, is steek. Imagine that, five stitches in the steek, so they line up really nicely. So because our beginning of the round marker is three stitches in, that's where we need to start, and that's where I've drawn this, drawn this orange line so that we can see that. So if I knit two stitches for the steek, then I go into the blue section, this is the knit to the fingertips. You can see in the words that the pattern has written down. And then I made myself a little extra note just so that I was paying attention. If you want the mittens to turn out like this, you're going to knit the blue chart to the fingertip. Then you're going to switch to the green chart and go back to the cuff. All right. Then you're going to switch to the blue chart for the two, the fingertip knitting. And then back to the green for the back to the cuff section. What this does is it points the whole design back toward the cuff on both mittens, so they're going to be similar. If you wanna change that, you absolutely can. In fact, she refers to this in the wording in the page that has the chart. And I think that's what's throwing us off is there are so many choices here with this mitten pattern. It's unbelievably freedom. But that means also that we have to make a decision and a lot of us have made plenty of extra decisions lately so we may be running out of them. So if you're happy with the way these mittens look, I would suggest just follow the chart as written. So blue to the fingertip, right? And then green back to the cuff, okay? And then the last thing to think about is she does comment on what row you need to start the pinky decreases and talks about how they work. 
okay? That's right here. They're pretty steep, so decide, do you like them as they are, or do you want to leave them, right? Now, most of us have a little finger that's much shorter than the rest, that's why it's designed that way. So your pattern is going to have a fairly steep decrease here. If you're feeling adventurous, of course, you can change that. But if you want to follow the pattern as written, not have to think too hard, that is the way to go. All right, post your questions below. We'll get them all answered. We'll make more videos along the way as we need to, but go check out our color work video. I've got one on starting this, and then of course you can refer back to our Fireflies hat for basic color work just to get you started if you need a refresher. Happy knitting!